University of Wyoming Nordic ski team is not your traditional athletic ski team. Instead, we bring together in a beautiful Afghan of synergy, athleticism, scholarship, and environmental and social justice. Athletes on our team bring together both their sexy minds and their fit bodies in order to make positive impacts in the world. They travel throughout the year, all over the nation and throughout the world, and over the last four World University Games, the University of Wyoming athletes have been representatives. This year, we traveled to Almaty, Kazakhstan, where we got to experience the full vastness of a world event. We stayed in an athlete village, but at the same time as we were skiing in this incredible venue, we were also integrating scholarship. Over the past two World University Games in Slovakia and Kazakhstan, we have designed action learning curriculum to integrate with our travels abroad and our travels throughout the year. So athletes on the UW Nordic ski team simultaneously uh, ski in the highest level of competition while at the same time they engage in a hybrid interdisciplinary course that employs action learning. Each day as we drive up the hillside and slowly emerge from the thick smog, I feel like an ancient creature that has evolved to crawl a little further out of the sea, onto the land. My ability to leave the sea gives me the upper hand evolutionarily as I can escape the competition of the writhing waters. In reality, I do have an advantage. I am not trapped in the poisoned air of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Climate change is an incredibly difficult issue to communicate because of its scope and complexity. The image will attempt to draw parallels between the environment and the beauty of our natural form. These images will describe the Earth as an organism that is, in many ways, as fragile and fleeting as our own bodies. The word body is defined as the organized physical substance of an animal or plant, as a group of people or things, and as a mass of matter distinct from the masses. From our individual bodies to the unique structure and orientation of our team within a social society, we fit all definitions of the word. We nurture our bodies to make them healthy and strong and cultivate a network of relationships that are the nervous system of our team. Not only are we athletes, most of us are academics that have in some way incorporated environmental stewardship into our education. We understand that the earth as a whole is also a body. Each ecosystem's processes are interwoven with its neighbors and the water flows like blood around the globe, providing the basic necessities of life. On every scale of the body, terrestrial, team, and individual, we strive to improve. of talk lately you might have heard about the human microbiome how each of our bodies is home to trillions of microorganisms that affect all sorts of things from our metabolism to our mental health but you might not have known that the snow here also has its own microbiome that affects all sorts of things from the fertility of the soil beneath to the amount of carbon dioxide that's being fixed from the atmosphere or released into the atmosphere so it could even contribute to global climate change so with climate change, we know that snow for skiing is becoming less and less reliable, so we have to rely on artificial snow. And we know that artificial snow 
is a little bit different from natural snow, even though they're both mostly just water and air. So, for my action learning project, I decided to see if there really was a difference in the microbiome between natural snow and artificial snow. So, at one of our race venues where there were trails that had almost entirely natural snow and some trails with almost entirely artificial snow, I grabbed some sterile mason jars and collected snow samples from each type of snow. And this way, I can filter out the water, collect the microbes, extract the DNA, sequence it, and compare the types of microorganisms in each type of snow to see if there's a difference. Um, for me, the great thing about this action learning project was that I got to actually go out there and experience it. I didn't just read about it, read about the snow in a textbook. I could feel it, I could see it. Um, I remember skiing on it, and you would ski between the natural and the artificial snow, and you might be going along just fine, and you hit it, and you just sort of stop, because it was different. I did my project on uh, mapping snow depth uh, across the United States uh, based off annual precipitation temperature uh, and solar radiance using ArcGIS. Um, what was great about this project is it further allowed me to explore my passions of uh, skiing and climate change and how we uh, convey the information surrounding these issues to the uh, public in a more general sense in, some, in a way that is more digestible to them. The class combined with the research project allowed me to see how we could create a product that inspired people to uh, action based off of what influenced their daily lives. Uh, for me, the thing that influences my daily life is uh, the ability to ski. And I was trying to create a connection with people in my community like that and saying, hey, this is what the rest of the world, how the rest of the world sees things. Uh, here's the people who can ski, who can't ski. Uh, within the context of the contiguous 48 uh, United States. Hard to drop off the plane. I'm in the anthropology and communication, this so this is kind of my... Right. <laughs> but surely they need to see every year. I'm a senior. I'm um, graduating in May. The data collected did not suggest outdoor recreationists are more likely to believe in climate change. You'll notice these statistics on the right. However, the data did suggest outdoor recreationists are significantly more likely to consider themselves to be conservationists. You'll notice this data here is 67.86% versus 90.33%. Additionally, Outdoor recreationists who participate in snow sports, snowboarding, snowshoeing, sledding, skiing, were more likely to consider themselves to be conservationists than were non-snow sport recreationists. Nordic skiers, a specific subgroup of snow sport recreationists, had the highest density of conservationists. bacteria in the spring and down here you have a constant source of hydrogen sulfide gas so H2S and they oxidize that and take the electrons and they move the electrons all the way up their little filament and they reduce the oxygen to water which is super cool because that's a more uh, energy efficient electron acceptor for them mm. 
And so down here you have less uh, H2S being produced, or yeah, they have like H2S being converted, right? So they're chemotrophs that are using yes. hydrogen sulfide as an energy source and then they're aerobically respiring. Yeah, and these are all the same like bacteria and they're all connected. They just like transport the electrons to a new place. Right. Which is amazing. That's actually exactly. awesome. Yeah. Like, Phenomenal. Like a, a and how do they think that like okay. with global warming, with ocean temperatures rising, that will affect like the spring time? What a wonderful question. Um, crests have not been studied very much, but the ones that have been studied, we've found that there are three main types. There's cyanobacterial, moss, and lichen. And the moss is the most uh, moisture-loving crust, and then lichen, and then the cyanobacteria. Typically in these flat sandy areas, you'll have cyanobacteria colonizing first. They're the most hardy and they uh, prepare the area basically for these other organisms to come in.